G'day painters, welcome back to Bella Mars Miniatures. In today's video, it's back to the old world to paint a cannon for my dwarf army. Let's get to painting. For my dwarfs, I'm trying the technique of keeping a single shadow colour across my entire army, which is why I undercoat everything with purple. This was hit with a grey sear from a rattle can, then midnight purple from Vallejo through an airbrush. I've been having issues with the midnight purple, it seems really inconsistent through the airbrush. Sometimes it comes out almost black, other times it's coming out much lighter than it should. Since I have very little experience with airbrush, I don't know if this is happening because I'm doing something wrong or if it's an issue with the paint. So I'm currently looking at other purples to try, and we'll see if that makes a difference. Though I did airbrush my quarrelers when I did the cannon, so in their video it'll still be midnight purple. As always, my plan is to block in all the colours first before starting to do shading and highlighting, and I started with Dark Sky for the blues. Which was a mistake. Hey look, the first step after picking up a brush, and it's a mistake. That's a new record for my videos. I should have done the red first and blocked that in, because I'm going to mess up the blue a lot when I'm doing the red. The reason I made this mistake was that I wasn't feeling great and wasn't really feeling in the mood to paint. When I'm feeling like that, but I know I need to get painting done, I just pick up a brush and just start putting colours on the model. Usually once I'm painting for a while, I find my groove and start enjoying myself. But it meant I didn't think through the order I should be doing the colours, which led to doing the blue first instead of the red, but at least it got me painting and making progress. Speaking of the red, I tried out using Gory Red from Vallejo for my first layer. I mentioned in a previous video I've been having issues with the red I'm using not covering well, so I'm trying out some different reds to hopefully speed things up a bit. The gory red definitely covers better than the vampire red, but it's a very orangey finish which is not what I'm looking for. But it's given a good base for me to build my normal red recipe on top at least. And that's the next step. Now that I have a base to build the reds from, I start with my normal reds. First is a vampire red. You can see here why I should have done the red first. I could probably get the red into these spots without messing up the blue, but being that careful would just take too much time. It'll be quicker to come back and fix the blue later. After all, I'm trying to get an army painted and not a display piece, so speed is a bit important. Next is time for the medals, and I start with plate mail. This is the point where I realised I probably should have sub-assembled this, but I'm not actually sure how easy that would be. I think it would probably end up being way too many pieces for a sub-assemble to be worth it. I've not built the organ gun yet, so I'll play with that when I build it and see if I can sub-assemble it. I should note, I'm also working on the crew alongside the cannon and doing the colours on them at the same time. So the time at the bottom is for both the cannon and the crew, and I'll be showing the colours that are only on the crew later when I get to that. Then it's time for what's actually the last colour to be blocked in on the cannon, hammered copper. The cannon itself only has four colours on it. You could fit more colours in if you wanted, but the four colours I have on it fit my army scheme, and I feel like adding others would just be forced. There are a few colours that are only on the crew, and that's the next step. First I do the beards. As normal for my dwarfs, the beards are where I'm going to get some variety in. So we have Necromancer Cloak for a black beard, a Desert Yellow for a blonde beard, and Chaotic Red for a reddish brown beard. Then it's the leathers on the crew. The gloves, belt, and boots all get hit with leather brown. One of the crew also has an apron that I hit with leather brown as well. The final colour to be blocked in is barbarian flesh for the skin. For two of these guys, the only flesh that they're showing is on the face. So I decided again that you're not going to get much variety here. So I just use the same flesh tone for all three. Though the guy that's showing off his guns is going to get a bit more attention during the highlight stage, as you'd expect. This next step that I did is one you could probably skip if you're smart enough to paint the colours in the right order. But I didn't, so I need to do this step. 
I put my blue and red on my palette and just go around and fix up my mistakes. The mistakes were mostly the blue parts on the cannon, but I also fixed up a few small mistakes that were on the crew and on some of the other colours too. While doing that, I realised I hadn't done the parchment on, that one of the crew has on his clipboard, so I hit that with skeleton bone. I think it gives a good parchment colour. Now it's time to establish some shadows. As I said before, I'm using purple as a unifying shadow tone across my entire army, and it's the only shade colour I'm using. So I put a 50-50 mix of contrast medium and purple tone on my palette, as well as some undiluted purple tone. I'm not doing an all over wash with this. I only want the purple tint in select spots, and for the most of it, I'm using the diluted wash for a lighter effect. The undiluted shade I'm being even more selective with only picking out the runes and spots that I feel like just need that stronger definition. And this is how it looks once I've established some shadows. I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along. Always remember to drop your model, it's important. Now all the boring blocking in is done, it's time to start highlighting. This is the step I enjoy the most when painting models. Starting to see the highlights come together really makes the model pop and just brings it to the next level. It just sucks that the highlighting step is usually the quickest. So first for the metal is shining silver. For the metal and gold, I only do one layer of highlights. Using true metal paints means that they're going to reflect the light well, so I feel like it doesn't need as much highlighting and is a spot I can save some time when I'm working on a full army. Next, it's greedy gold to highlight the copper. There's a lot of copper on the cannon, but much of it is in shadows. So I'm just taking my time and making sure I'm only hitting the spots that would be reflecting the light, or parts that I want to stand out a bit more. Then it's the blue. I start with deep blue, hitting the top of the models and the spots that'll be in light. I do a couple layers of this, working in smaller areas to try to get a nice gradient towards the spots that I want highlighted the most. Then ultramarine blue for the final highlight, just hitting the edges and the very top of the blue parts. For the red, there's very little on the cannon that actually needs to be highlighted as most of the red is in shadows, but the crew has red that needs to be highlighted, so that's what we do. Dragon red is the first layer. and then pure red for the final red highlight. And that's the last lot of highlights that will include the cannon. Now we're finishing the crew. The beards all get a light dry brush for their highlights. Fur brown for the chaotic red, elven flesh for the blonde, and uniform gray for the black. Now it's time for the eyes. I always feel like I have decent brush control right up until I reach the point where I have to do the eyes. The eyes being so recessed makes them so hard to reach and I just regularly mess them up. But thankfully it's pretty easy to clean up the mistakes later. And then just a dot of necromancer cloak for the pupils. For the flesh, I start with Barbarian Flesh to tidy up any messes from the shading and just re-establish that mid-tone, making sure to leave the shadow tone in the recesses. Then a 50-50 mix of Barbarian Flesh and Elven Flesh to start building the highlights. Flesh like this is really easy to highlight, it's so defined. All you need to do is just go around and pick out the raised parts that are facing upwards, working in smaller areas.
And that's what I do for the final highlight, which is a mix of two parts elven flesh to one part barbarian flesh, just picking out the very top of the flesh parts that the light would be hitting. Then the final thing to highlight is the leather. With a 50-50 mix of leather brown and elven flesh, I work around the model, picking out the raised edges and parts that would be in the light. And the final step is some writing on the clipboard. I water down some black to the point it's flowing off the tip of my brush, just really nice. And I just do some scratches on the paper to look like some writing. You could skip this part if you want, but it's pretty easy to do and it's a nice little detail. And we're done. I think eight and a half hours is a decent amount of time to get these done in. I definitely could have saved some time if I did the colors in the right order. I think subassembling the cannon could help too. I'm also wondering if it's better to do the crew separately instead of alongside the cannon. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how these came out and how long they took me. I look forward to seeing them on the table, but first I need to get more of my dwarves painted. If you want to join me as I paint up the rest of my army, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Catch you in the next video.